incredible things are going to happen, but that's not my, my message. People were asking me all day today, you know, what, what, what are you going to preach on? And I was kind of keeping it under wraps, uh, trying to kind of like, all right, this is it's going to be a little di- different message for me. I'm the restoration pastor, so it is a part of a restoration message. But if you're here tonight and you feel like, you know what, I don't know who this guy is, but I just know one thing. I need some encouragement. I, I, I need some help. I need some support. You're in the right place. If you're here and you're carrying some heavy load and you don't know how to carry it any longer, you're in the right place. If you're here and you don't know what to do with the problem that you have and it's bothering you and keeping you up at night, you're in the right place. God is going to give you a shot of encouragement. If you're here and you feel like you've run out of gas, you know, have you run out of gas before? You know, put up that, that uh, thing. One time I ran out of gas. When I was younger, I was a little bit less wise, wiser, you know what I mean? So I was kind of like dumb, young and dumb. And I remember running out of gas, and I'm like, wow, Lord, what am I going to do? And I was putting it to the gas station, and I pulled right in to the gas station when I ran out of gas. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. And the Lord was telling me, you dummy, I was reminding you an hour ago to put gas and you weren't listening to me. If you feel like you're running out of gas, God now has a shot of encouragement, which happens to be my message tonight. It's called encouragement. What is it? What is it? Now, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I want to give honor to where honors do. I have my mom and dad in the house. And I, I want to honor you, mom, dad. They're sitting in the back. My dad's 86 years old. I won't tell you how old my mom is. She will wring my neck. <clears throat> and they're my, my encouragers. They're why I'm doing what I'm doing. And a part of me is in them, a big part. And that process of encouragement is now why I'm in full-time ministry today, to be honest with you. Not that I was just called and anointed to do what we are. We, we are. We're called and anointed to do it. But because they tread the water first, they believe God first, they put into motion what I call generational blessing. And I celebrate you, Dad, and I celebrate you, Mom, tonight. Good on you. God bless you. I grew up in uh, Paramount, and Paramount is a suburb of kind of L.A., about 15 minutes outside of L.A., and I, in, in, in high school, I was kind of a nerd, you know, I was kind of one of these guys that didn't relate to nobody, um, you know, I was kind of lost when I was in uh, the beginning of high school, and when, senior, when my senior year came around, I got lit up by Jesus Christ. I rededicated, rededicated my life, and all of a sudden, my whole world started turning around. I happened to lose all my friends. All my friends left me because I became a God lover and a God seeker. So all of a sudden, those friends just drifted, and I remember my loneliest year was my senior year. And that, that was kind of heartbreaking because, you know, you build up, you know, in high school to get to your senior year and you celebrate it. And for me, it was kind of a downer year, but it wasn't a downer year because I accepted the Lord and I was lit up on Jesus. Just no one around me was lit up on Jesus. And I was kind of alone. But I remember going into um, one of my high school classes and it was, it was called industrial drawing classes. And industrial drawing class, there was a individual, and how I could describe him to you to you is um, uh, by the a guy by the name of Mr. Diskin, and he looked like this actor Wilford Brimley, exactly this guy. You know this guy? He was in Cocoon, and now he does diabetic commercials. That guy. He was that guy. And I remember doing something in high school that lit this guy up and encouraged my socks off. It was industrial drawing, so we had to draw certain things. If you wanted to become an architect or you wanted to get into some type of career in drawing, then we, you took his class. And this was my favorite class because this guy was a number one encourager. He encouraged you all the time. He, he, he was, that was like his, his MO. Everybody that knew him would encourage you. And I remember drawing a logo for a company, and he got super excited that this company decided to use it. 
And I drew it, and then he held it up. And when he held it up, he kind of celebrated a win. And he held up this logo, and he said, and he said it this way, uh, Senor Alvarado is here, and he has a logo, and he's going to show you what he had. So he had me stand up and walk like a kindergartner, walk around with an assignment. <laughs> And I'm like, wow, look at this. And he kept going on and on how wonderful I did. How amazing I was. And it was almost like out of left field because at my lowest point when I had no friends, when I had no one to talk to, when I had nobody, here comes a Mr. Diskin to shoot me in the arm with encouragement. And that encouragement lit me up and I brought I got some confidence one of the little favors that you had as as somebody that would do something like that is he gave you this back room drawing room and you get to draw there unhindered and I remember me and some long-haired acid freak drug smoking pothead guy got the room and I remember I want him to Christ because I said, man, I got a closed situation and I'm going to teach this guy and preach this guy about Jesus. And I remember him getting saved. And I remember how God did that supernaturally. But I remember at my lowest point, God find it, found me and found me through a teacher. Maybe it was a coach for you. Maybe it was another pastor. I don't know if you know this, but this is a house of encouragement. Every song we sang is an encouraging song. Every time we get up here, it's an encouraging word. Every time we speak the gospel and open up the Bible, that word is coming out as an encouragement to you and to me. There's no negative songs that we sing. I haven't found one. And if there is one that seems negative, there's a turnaround and there is a victory in the end. And this is my message tonight, encouragement, which is if you break up the word encouragement, it's found in the dictionary as infused with courage. The N, E N, the first part of that is to put in to deposit, to support, to push in. That's what encouragement means. If you do a DIS, discouragement, it's to pull out. So here, the word of God that is preached time and time again, it's to put into you courage, put into you faith, put into you victory, put into you celebration. Why? Because this world's a mess and has no good news to tell us. Just turn on the news. You'll get quickly depressed. And there's no answers. Now, if I could have the liberty, Pastor Jessica, I'll read the first line of a prophetic word you read, you read to us. The first line, Pastor Jessica got a, got a prophetic word from the Lord, and she wrote it down and encouraged us pastors. There's the first phrase I'm going to share with you tonight. The very first phrase of this prophetic word is profound. And Pastor Jessica was pleading the Lord, and she said she was hearing all the discouragement and the shootings in schools, and she was bogged down and heavy-hearted. And here's what the Lord told her. Today is not a sad day for me. It's not a day of sadness or disappointment or hurt and rest. Today is a day of breakthrough for you, your kids, and your families. And all the de demonic powers will be now executed and God is at work and my grace is sufficient. Now, that's only a little bit of that word. I hope she posted on that blog because it's a very encouraging word. I need to hear that word today. You need to hear that word today. What I have for you is a little bit of encouragement, okay? So will you help me out a little bit? Here today, I'm going to open up the word of God. In the word of God, we find... Right out of the text of Romans. And I'm defining encouragement as God's affirmation for strength and support. When you run out of gas, you need God's gas or fuel 
to now keep you afloat and keep you going. If you don't have this, you will die. If you don't have encouragement, you will drop back. If you don't have this encouragement, if you don't have this word of God, you are not going to go forward. You will move backwards. We as pastors do our best here to serve you. But what we can't do for you, God can And God wants to infuse you with this God's affirming, strengthening, supporting word. I call that gas. G-A-S-S. Not gas when you're eating a bean burrito. That's a different type of gas. This is the substance in the word of God. This is the fuel that's going to keep you going for a legacy of time. This is the thing that's going to inactivate something inside of you that's going to be so powerful. You can hear the most negative voices and you will be muted to them if you get inspired by this encouragement. This encouragement has to happen. If not, you will regress. You will fall back. You will give up. It breaks my heart, and I know it does you, to hear all these school shootings that are happening in America. It, it tears me up. Here's another one. You know what makes me more sad than hearing the shootings? Anytime the innocent gets lost, our heart is broken. But if you look at the MO to these individuals that now shoot people or kill people, They're recluses, losers, they're bullied, and they're disconnected. I guarantee you, if they found somebody like Mr. Diskin or like somebody like you that will love them to life, that would whole change this whole dynamic. So what am I saying? There are teachers in this house. There are coaches in this house. You are beautiful, inspired individuals. You never know who you're ministering to. God is in the business of finding those guys and encouraging them and making them into beautiful people. Not the rejects, not the disconnected. That's who the enemy plays on. But what breaks my heart is these guys have the same MO. They're lonely, they're broke, they're busted, disgusted, and then they go off. They're bullied, and all of a sudden they get angry, and they're mad at the world. And the only thing that is going to fix the crisis in America, two things. Number one, please let prayer back in school, because you've opened the door to the enemy, and he's come in. And number two, to be an encourager. To find these little boys, to find these kids, to find these brothers, to find these sisters, and give them a shot of encouragement. As a matter of fact, there was a medical study done. And this medical study, they were uh, testing these athletes that were working out. And when they were testing them, they put all kinds of uh, uh, wires on them, and they were testing them in treadmill and performance, you know, things. And, And all of a sudden, they were mapping their progress. And they did, a, they did a study, and they said it this way. We, we're, what we're doing is we're going to wire six people up, and we're going to monitor you, and we're going we're gonna to see how you chart your progress with the treadmill and weightlifting and performance you know, um, things. And, and what they did is they, 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 they put all kinds of things on them, and they had a team of individuals, doctors around them, they were monitoring their heart rate and performance testing, and then they had another team that were actually celebrating them. And when they looked at this, they said this, okay, so we're going to put this guy on a bike or a treadmill, and we're going to tell them, boy, go for it, do it. You can do it. Man, you're good. You can get it done. And they affirmed them and encouraged them and affirmed them and believed in them. Then they took a group that no one said nothing to. And they matched the two together. And those that got an affirmation, a celebration, a good word, an encouraging word, all the performance levels went up up to six times over the normal people. This is what normal encouragement does. I don't have normal encouragement for you tonight. I have God encouragement for you tonight because the gas that you need is the word of God that is now going to be declared over you. This is why we tell you guys to be in your word. Bring your Bibles. This is why. 
the word of encouragement. The God's affirmation of strength and support, Romans chapter 15, verse 4 says this, everything written in scripture was written to teach us in order that we might have hope and patience and encouragement through the scriptures. That we may find God in the source of our patience and the source of our encouragement and enable to you to have the same viewpoints amongst yourself by following Christ's example. Right in the middle of that scripture, Jesus is teaching us, or God is teaching us, the source of encouragement is the Bible. The word of declared is your hope. It is your anchor. It is your resource. It is life. And when you don't have it, you regress. You move back, you step back, and you don't move forward. When the word of God is preached and you believe it, God shows up and he does something miraculous with your brokenness. You could find the most miserable situation and you find the word of God and you open it up and all of a sudden there's a turnaround in your mind, there's a turnaround in your heart and all of a sudden you've got the energy to keep on moving on even though it doesn't look hopeful. But inside of you, the word of God is being declared in your mind and declared in your your spirit. Like that coach and like those people that were affirming those people, you can make it. You got it. You're going to win. You are good. You're amazing. You're my boy. You're my girl. I remember I was broken in a broken situation once, and I was crying out to the Lord. Then I was asking Jesus, Lord, please answer my prayer. Please answer me. And I got a word from the Lord. I got all kinds of encouraging scriptures and I wrote them down. I believe in praying. I believe in journaling. I believe it's just a practice of my life. And I was getting this. And I remember at the lowest point, God gave me a beautiful word. And it lit me up and it carried me to my next level. And the word was this. I know you're broken and I know you're hurting. I'm hearing your prayers, but I'm putting you on my priority list to answer them. Wow. Me on your priority list? Yes, little you. I'm putting you on my priority list. Yes, but that's Pastor Joel. Here's what I'm telling you. That's you, my friend. You are on God's priority list. He knows your pain. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you lost. He knows all what you have inside of you. And God says you're on his priority list. Wow, you're at the top. Well, I don't feel like it. It's not about feelings. It's about faith. It's not about emotions. It's not about placing your stuff on like, wow, all the things have to line up and I have to get happy and kind of fake it until I make it. No, the word of God is sharp, two-edged sword, the Bible says. The word of God says this, that you will be encouraged by the scriptures and the scriptures will teach you how to be patient and encourage you and enable you to be like Jesus. What does the word of God, what does the word of God declare? G stands for God. Here's what God tells you. Psalms 121 verses 1 through 8. Lift I lift my eyes unto the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. That's a word of encouragement. That's a word in due season. When you feel there is nothing else you can do, you can lift your eyes up and the answer's there, my friend. When you declare to God, I'm done with this, I'm done with that, but I'm not done with you. I lift my eyes into the hill and that's where my help comes from. God is your source of encouragement. We deal with, in restoration, all kinds of brokenness. It's so heartbreaking to hear the stories of individuals with their liabilities and addictions and losses. And I still remember this one individual that was writing a forgiveness letter to his mom. 
And he was in the fountain at the well of salvation, the symbol of the rock. And he was there for a couple of hours. And I came to him and I said, hey, man, what's going on? He says, look, I'm trying to push a forgiveness letter out to my mom, but it's very difficult, Pastor. I said, I know. I know how, how these letters can be hard, hard for you to do. But let me encourage you. Keep on pushing through. Keep on doing it. Keep on writing it. Get it out. And I said, by the way, and I, you know, I had to ask, what are you writing a forgiveness letter on? I'm Pastor Joel, I can ask. <clears throat> what are you writing? He goes, look, I'm writing a letter to my mom when I was a little boy. Me and my sister were in, the, in Mexico, and we were messing with her sewing machine, and we messed it up, and she came like a raging bull in the house and tied a rope around my neck and hung me in the closet and hung my sister in the closet. And my sister got loose and untied me, and we ran to the hills, and we hid out for three days. But I'm here to tell you, Pastor Joel, and he said this in tears. I'm writing a letter to forgive my mom who attempted to kill me because my Lord, my Lord has told me my help comes from on high. I am no longer have to be bound to someone who birthed me to kill me. I am now victorious in Jesus Christ, and I can, and I will, and I will release my mom. About two years later, I married them in the fountain here at the rock. And these are the stories we see in absolute misery, and God turns it around because he's ready to help you. He's ready to bless you. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Isaiah 40 says this, those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up like wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. And if you study the Hebrew, there's an exchange going on in that scripture. There's a, an exchange, a supernatural exchange. It's saying this, you're giving God your weakness and he in, infuses his strength inside of you. Everything you can't do, God can. And when you give it up, up, he gives it in and all of a sudden turns your life around he gives you a supernatural God encounter and what you couldn't do you will able to be able to do that's the turnaround in Isaiah 40 he will renew your strength he will renew your purpose he will renew your look at just because the way you started bad doesn't mean you have to end bad just because you went one way doesn't mean you have to die that way. There is victory in Jesus, and he's the great turnaround of people's lives. But that's only for a few people, not me. Uh-uh. He found you out tonight, and he's telling you. He found you out tonight in this room. A stands for affirmations, which means an agreement or a commitment to Jeremiah 29, 11. These are all classic scriptures. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know my plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not evil, to give you a future and a hope to call upon me. Those who come to me, I will hear you. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, you will be found, declares the Lord. I will restore the fortunes and I will gather you to the nations and I will place and I will drive you, declares the Lord, to bring you back from where you were sent in exile. That's a prophetic word to us. That's a prophetic word to you. You know, as I was praying, I was like, man, Lord, what do you want me to say? And I have a prophetic word for Dan and Jess. Here it is. There's a well of salvation at the rock. But that well is turning into a river. And that river is going to go far and wide. And revival is hitting the rock. Mark my word. Revival is hitting the rock. What is revival? Good communicators, good speakers, good conferences. No, revival means supernatural things are just happening. It's miracles, signs, and wonders. All of a sudden, people that are jacked up are getting healed. People that are messed up in their head. God is renewing and reviving the waste places and the broken places and manifesting them in a beautiful way. There's a river going to flow at the rock. We haven't seen it, but we're going to see it. 
had its begun already, and I could feel it. And when revival hits, man, it just goes everywhere. And that's what we're praying for, and that's what we've been praying for. That's what we've been believing for. That's what we've been seeding for. We're not just doing church, folks. We're ready and being set up for our God encounter here in San Bernardino. It's already started. It's already started. Here's how it started, okay? Well, we're the bankrupt city, Pastor. Nobody has jobs. Oh, well, that's what the devil said. The business community knows different. Amazon, who is not Christian, decided to show up in our backyard, and now they put about seven buildings all the way from Waterman all the way to the freeway, 215, and there is something happening in San Bernardino. Um, the, the head of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, said this in a talk, a communication talk, with leaders all over the world. He said this, we took an experiment, one in San Bernardino and one in Detroit. And we said, we're going to take those two cities and we're going to do our plants. And we're going to now put buildings there. And we're going to put things there. And we're going to put warehouses there. And we're going to experiment. We're going to see what happens in a bankrupt city. And what Jeff Bezos said says, our number one producer, our number one performer is San Bernardino. Wow. That means millions of dollars are coming our way and already here. Well, I wish it was in my pocket. Okay. If you were here at the financial message, wasn't that a good message this morning? If you were here, it's not about money. It's about God. And if, if you want to be rich, then there's a purpose for you being rich, and you will be a resource of generosity. He's just not going to make you a millionaire to sit on it. He's going to make you a millionaire to impart it. That's the supernatural blessing. Well, I want stuff, okay? If you want just stuff, everybody has stuff. It's purpose, my friend. And that's what he said here. It's purpose. I have plans. I got plans. God has plans. Man has plans. Your ex has plans. Your crazy neighbor has plans. Your teacher that wasn't Mr. Diskin has plans. I remember when I was a young guy, I was, you know, passionately, God was lighting me up. And I remember told this minister of the gospel, you know what, I feel, I feel this. He goes, what do you feel? And he was about my age, so I don't know why I was asking him advice. But he, he was a Bible school student, he knew more than me. So I started asking him, I said, I feel this. I feel that when I go in the Lord and what I do, what I do, something supernatural is going to happen to me. And I feel I'm a part of something big. I'm a part of something immense and unbelievable. And he looked at me and says, you're not going to amount to nothing. You don't have any Bible school training. You're nothing and you'll never be nothing. And something resonated into my spirit that said this. Don't listen to that. Listen to this. I have plans declared for you. Plans not for evil, but for a future and a hope. He got plans for this little guy because I got generational blessing on me. And when the enemy tried to take me out at age seven, I grew up and now taking back what was stolen. And that's you. And that's me, and that's us, and that's the Rock Church. That's us. That's you. That's me. When we see affirmation after affirmation throughout the whole scriptures, the Bible teaches these things. S stands for strength. He says, fear not. I am with you, Isaiah 41.10. Do not be dismayed. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hope, uphold you in my right hand. This is God saying, don't give up. Don't give in. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the report says. I don't care what the bank says. I don't care what the idiot said that cursed you. I care what I say. And here's what God says. Don't fear, my friend. Don't be dismayed. There is a turnaround coming for you. And that turnaround is right there. Breakthrough is on your way. 
Breakthroughs on your way. Pastor, I got an impossible situation. Not for God. You don't know what I've been through. You're right, I don't, but God does. And he is not moved by crazy people. Ghetto people, misconnected, disconnected people, the news media. He don't care what they say. He don't care what national leaders says. He's God. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and when he wants. He's not going to lose. Man, he will never lose. He might look like he's losing, but he's not. He's raising you up, and he's making an army grow strong that believe him and be strengthened by him. Isaiah 40, 31 says, do for, do for those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. For Samuel, when David was grieving and running from the Machalites, I can't even say that, that word. Um, the invasion of armies that were around him. David was distressed because they were destroying everybody around him. Remember, Saul was after him. All these people were after him, and David hunkered down, and he said this. He said, my soul is broken. I'm greatly distressed. I'm suffering from depression. Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, but David was deeply distressed for the people who were ready to stone him. And his soul was grieved, and every man and his sons and his daughters were there to create an affront to David. David was so discouraged, he encouraged himself in the Lord. When you have no more resource, he's your resource. You can hunker down and he will give you a word. But you have to seek him. You have to knock so that door will be open. Don't just wait. We counsel people, I counsel young people all the time. Like, okay, you need a job? Yeah, okay, what are you waiting for? Well, I email the companies. Okay, have you went and actually knocked on the door? Well, no, that's too hard to do. If you knock, that door might be open or another door might be open. God wants you to knock. Don't just sit down there and just wait for things to happen. Go after God. Go after intention. Go after purpose. Watch God open up these supernatural doors. I remember there was an individual and I was running my business. He said, there is no business in this business complex. I tried. And I told him, oh, really? He says, yeah, I knocked on every door. I set my cards out. You're not going to find anything. And I hunkered in my little truck and I said, God, if there's business here, let me find it. If there's business here, let me find it. This man said there's no business. But I believe there's, there's people in this complex and all around this region that have your money and I need it. <laughs> Pretty bold. And I went knocking on doors and knocking on doors. And I found a little crack in the door. And I got my foot in. And I wiggled in. And when I wiggled in, a manager was at lunch and happened not to be there. So the boss was there. And the boss says, what do you want? And I said, well, I see that you are in need of me. And he says, no, we don't need you. And I said, no, no, I think you do need you because what you have on your desk and what you have on your wall is a little bit broken and outdated and I could fix it for you. He goes, you think so? And I started encouraging him. You could do this and you could do this and give it. By the time the hour was over, I was signing a big fight contract in the name of the Lord. And he says, I don't know why I'm doing this for you because I'm not the one that talks to anybody. I'm hidden in the back. And no one finds me. It is rare that you get to talk to me. And in the back, after that, I was like, thank you, Jesus, for opening that door. Thank you, Lord. Because if God wants you to find it, you'll find it. But you got to seek it. Because if you're not seeking it, you're not going to find it. You're not pleading it. It won't be found. Right there in the scripture, it says David increased his ability to encourage himself in the Lord. Support S. Where Psalms 1 40, four, one through three says this, God is my refuge and my strength, my very pr present help in need. Therefore, do not fear. 
The earth will give away through the mountains will be moved in the heart of the sea through the waters and foam, but through the mountains will tremble in its swelling. Verse 10, but be still to know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted among the earth for the Lord's host is with us and God of Jacob is your fortress. That's a word to name for some people. You've been so beat up by your issues, by people, by people around you, and you're looking at all these closed doors and says, man, I don't got anything. And here, the Lord of hosts means that's the great big, I call it the King Kong God. That's what Hebrew is. The King Kong God is ready to show up and break through, ready to make it happen, and ready to go on your behalf, ready to put a fortress around you to protect you and your children where no weapon formed against you will prosper. He will gird you. He will support you. He will manifest himself strong for you. Amen? Some of you guys are like, yeah, I know, but. No, 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 no. No, I know, but. God's in control. God is the one that has the last word, not the people around you, not the voices in your head. I call it the negative committee in your head. You know the negative committee in your head? We're like, you know, I'm, I'm going for a job application or I'm going for a new career uh, track. I'm going for education or maybe going on a date and you're telling yourself, I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I know I'm not going to get this date. Please rewrite that committee in your head. Your committee in your head is wrong. It's negative, it's disappointing, and it wants to keep you down. Now, don't go, I'm the most beautiful man, beautiful woman in the world. Oh, my God. Wow, you got to get to know me. That's how I met my wife, as a matter of fact. No, I didn't, actually. When I met her, she didn't even, she didn't even want nothing to do with me. She pushed me to her cousin, and she said, have at it. And I'm like, what? Well, I want you. I don't want your cousin. But in the name of the Lord, I had a word, and I pleaded my case, and I believed God, and I believed God. And all of a sudden, the door of Joanna opened up for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I, I, I remember the Lord gave me a word when I was going to be marrying her, and here was the word. It wasn't, a, you know, do what your parents said, don't do what your mom, no, no, no. Here was the word. If you marry her, the, she's good for me, and she'll be good for you for the long haul. Wow, I got that word and I seized it, I believed it, and I got married. Now 31 years married, and now going for 31 more. But when we almost lost our marriage, God showed up. In the broken places of my own soul, I cried out to God and he heard my cry. And he said, if you promise to follow me, I will fix all your broken places. And I'll put a fortress around you and your family, and you'll be generationally strong. And that strength will now help others. And it will help people all over the world. I was in that section when Pastor Deborah was preaching the gospel one time. I have it in recording. I was not even, I was just a member here. I was not a pastor. And she declared a prophetic word, which she normally doesn't do at the time over me and my wife, and that prophetic word was over me, Joanna, you, Pastor Dan, Luke, Pastor Jim, and it was a prophetic word, and it was a prophetic word where it went something like this, I haven't forgotten you, I want to use you, and I'm going to use you to the nations, and it's not just for this place, it's for the nations, and I will open mighty doors, and rivers will flow from here, and God will show up and do the supernatural. I'm living 10% of that prophetic word. I can't wait till I get to the end, where my children's children's children will be blessed. I'm walking in the supernatural, and so are you. So are you. But no one speaks to me like that. You're not listening. He's been trying to get your attention this whole service. He's been trying to get a hold of you. God has given you gas for the long haul. He's given you affirmation. He's given you strength. He's given you what God wants to give you, the support. Here's my question to you. Who needs this encouragement? Who needs this encouragement? I do. 
Every time I walk in this campus, I'm bringing things before the Lord, things that he has to answer, not man, not people. God, you got to answer me. you got to open up the doors. you got to show yourself faithful. Some of you have non-believing husbands, non-believing wives, kids that are a mess. you got to believe God, my friend. you got to gasp God for your family to be saved, your children to be saved. you got to believe God for the unbelievable. This is why I'm excited about this next, you know, this next series. It's because Pastor Dan is bringing us a message that's going to rip out the heart of the poverty mentality in people's lives. You know what poverty mentality is? I can't and I won't. You know what poverty mentality is? I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resource. I don't have enough brains. Hey, look at Pastor Joel. I can't even spoke right. And God is using me. Not about spoken right. It's about believing God. I'm believing for my children's children to be blessed. I'm believing to walk in that river of salvation and restoration, and not just for us, but for the nations. I'm believing that's you, my friend. That's me. That's us. And when we believe that way, all of a sudden the sky opens up and looks a little bit more beautiful. It looks a little bit more amazing. And look, gives you a shot of encouragement and gas for the long haul. You can make it. You're a winner. You're not a loser. You're not going to lose it. You're going to win it. You're going to be blessed and highly favored. That's the word. Who needs this encouragement? Who will you encourage? You know, people know me here. Yeah, I, when I asked the Lord, what do you want me to preach about? He says, preach what you do. Preach what you do. I'm an encourager in this house. That's what I am. You come to my office, you're getting encouragement. You, I, I go to the back, I pray, I'm always encouraging. And I told the Lord once, why am I that? Because you've replaced what, you were lo- what was lost inside of you. And now that you're an encourager, you're bearing fruit of that encourager. The Bible says if you water something, it will grow. If you water, he himself will be watered. That's the word of God says. If you start encouraging, you will be encouraged. With nothing God can use, something amazing that could happen through you. Could happen through me. Could happen through these empty seats. I'm waiting for a day where there is no room on this campus at all. And they're not here for some famous preacher. And they're not here for the F word free. They're here because there's a river at the rock. And it's flowing. A well of healing, restoration, supernatural blessing. Who needs this encouragement? I do. Who needs this encouragement? You do. Who are you going to encourage? God is going to bring people your way. This week, God is going to open up the doors. And this message is going to come right back to you. And you're going to say, boy, son. Good job, man. It's kind of weird. When our German family came from Germany and my daughter got married in February, they said, you Americans are fake. And I said, why? Because you guys kind of like juice everything up and make it beautiful. And I said, what do you mind? We don't walk in depression. I mean, when I seen you guys for the very first time, I didn't go, oh, my oh brother, my new family, the Germans. <laughs> we welcomed them in. We told them at the end, there was a guy that was not even in church, and he met me in the parking lot, one of the, one of the Germans that was here, and he said this, there is something different about your church and about you. There's life I see in you. I don't see it in Germany, but I see it in you. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, wherever we go, you guys are a blessing. You guys open up doors. You guys are very generous. You're very kind. You're very warm. You're very, I can't even describe it. And I told him, that's God. And he said, what do you mean? I said, this is God in us. God does this. He takes opportunities and makes nothing out of them. You're the opportunity, my friend. I told him, Daniel, please listen to me. At any time, I didn't shove the word of God down your throat. I didn't tell you you got to believe and receive. I showed you love. And he started to cry. And he said, yes, you did. And he said this, I will never forget you or your family. 
today, that's what God says about you. You're so beautiful and you're so amazing, you don't even know that you are. You're walking in with this liability and this crutch on you. You think everybody is your problem and you got a chip on your shoulder that everybody knows is all my God is saying, I love you, man, and I care for you and I want to do some amazing, beautiful things for you. Please let me. Please let me. The greatest encourager was Paul. Every time you open up Paul's scriptures, he encouraged. I want everybody to bow their heads. He said this. Encouraging word in Thessalonians. He says, I tell you directly, if the Lord is here and we who are still living, the Lord will return. And all those who are living will return to meet with him in the heavens, those who died before him. The Lord will come down from heaven and commanding a shout, the voice of an archangel and the trumpet call of God. And those who died in Christ in their graves will be risen first. And those that are remain alive will be caught up and raptured in the clouds to meet the Lord. And verse 18 says this, encourage everyone with these words. I don't know who you are. I don't know everybody here. But I do know one thing. With everybody heads bowed and everybody's closed, eyes closed. God wants to be your God. He could be our God, but He wants to be your God. But I need to do something on purpose. I need to make sure that everybody's right with God. You can't assume that you're right with God, there's no assumptions in God's program.